local rate. Yeah, it should be recording currently. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for reminding me. Yeah. So I'm the TA who, uh, who is responsible for, for this homework, the homework for part two, uh, which is the most challenging assignments in this course. Uh, so uh, because the recitation, the, this recitation is designed specifically for LAS, and it has a huge overlap with the bootcamp. So that's why I decided to combine these two together. <coughs> So there will be no bootcamp in the future. Um, and today, uh, I will use my iPad. I, 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 I designed some graph uh, for visualization because there's a lot of formulas here. I don't want the formulas because uh, I think you guys also hate formulas. So I make some graphs uh, and try my best to visualize everything. But before that, I will uh, give you a quick introduction about what is this homework, uh, what, what's the target and what's the task specifically. Okay, so the topic of this homework is LAS. So LAS is um, just the listener, attend and a spell. Uh, so what's that? So this is actually a, um, a framework based on the sequence to sequence model, the sequence to sequence framework and with the attention technique. And in your homework for, for part two, you are gonna implement this, um, this architecture from scratch. Uh, you will learn how to build your encoder, you will learn how to build your decoder, and you need to merge them together. And also the most difficult part, you need to involve the attention techniques to make your model uh, working. And in your homework, um, you are gonna build such a model uh, which will learn to and translate or transcribe an audio sequence signal um, to a word sequence. So basically, you will you will be given some 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 input, uh, some foamy input, just like what uh, it, it should be exactly the same uh, or very similar to what you have in homework one part two and homework four, uh, three part two. So you are given some some foamies, and then uh, your your task is to you know transform these formats to human readable sequences. Uh, so you can regard this like a uh, machine translation task. Um, and uh, just like mentioned before, LAS is a sequence to sequence learning framework. So it has a two main components. The first one is called uh, encoder. It should be a LSTM. Uh, it also named listener. And the, the, the second main component is the decoder. It's also another LSTM. And uh, at the same time, it's called speller. So basically, your encoder, your listener, will listen to your, to your, to your input, your phone is. And then uh, your decoder, the speller, will spell what it listened previously uh, into you know, human-readable sentences. And uh, to be more specifically, the listener is actually a, um, a special, a very special RNN, uh, which you might have not seen before. So it's called uh, pyramidal RNN. So what's that? I will, I will, I will cover uh, a lot of details later. But for now, you just understand that uh, this is not a normal uh, RNN, but you need to implement it from, from scratch. The spell is quite straightforward. It's just a uh, normal LSTM or RAN that converts, you know, uh, the high level features compressed by the listener, your encoder, into some output utterances um, by, you know, just specifying the probability distribution uh, over a sequences of uh, character and using the uh, attention mechanism. So the one property of this um, framework or this model is that it is a end-to-end -end model. So basically, you train your listener and the speller um, simultaneously. So why it is called LAS? Uh, I think uh, after the, the discussion uh, we had so far, you should be uh, able to understand this. So L stands for listener, S stands for speller, and attention is another technique used to you know 
greatly improve uh, your model's performance. Okay, so uh, let me take a look how many people we have right now. Uh, okay, uh, seems like we have eight to one people. Can you make the page bigger, please? Okay, cool. Um, how about now? Could you could you see that? Yeah, actually, this um this task is not very important because I um, I said before I will use I will use um my 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 iPad a lot of visualization for for teaching you guys. So don't worry about the task. Also, I will send all of the materials, all the graphs, all the code to to, to all of you after uh, this recitation weekend. Okay, before we uh, get started to the visualization part, I need some. I need to make some simple rules for today's um, bootcamp. So first of all, uh, this homework is a very very. Okay, I I, I should not put in this way. Uh, I don't want to disencourage you, but. This homework is very time consuming or, or challenging. Uh, so last semester, uh, you know, we, uh, although we, um, although the TA set the, uh, the, you know, the A cutoff to, to something very high, but um, I mean, and the higher means easier you get uh, because it should be the distance, the added distance. Uh, but there are only like, like three people uh, who passed the A cutoff on time. So, uh, you can you can understand that it is very um, challenging. So I encourage you guys start early. So uh, once this homework has been released, probably you can uh, get started. Uh, and and after this uh, bootcamp, I encourage you to watch the video again and again to deepen your understanding. All right. And in this in today's recitation, I need your cooperation. Um, I will check your understanding frequently because uh, as I said before, the concept is quite complex, especially for someone uh, who have no backgrounds on the attention or sequence to sequence. Uh, so I will ask you if you understand it. And then if you understand it, you type one on the chat window. If you have not understood it, then you just type zero. So I, 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 I need your very honest responses. So because um, this feedback will help me to make the decision if I need to, you know, um, cover more details or, you know, slow down my, my pace. And the second, the second simple rule is that, uh, try not to interrupt me, but, uh, please feel free to type your questions on chat. Um, after every important concept, I will stop for a while and answer all the questions on the chat and I give you guys a, uh, a short, like three or five minutes Q A session. Okay. So. This is uh, some some uh, logistics and announcements. Then uh, let's get started. Okay, again, uh, double check. You can see my screen, right? And everything's very clear. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, so first question, how many of you have heard of the word sequence to sequence? Have a good understanding of this um, architecture? If yes, then type one. If you if you don't heard of it, or you, you're not very familiar with, with it, then type zero, right? Okay, seems like all of you have a uh, good understanding of it. So I will briefly cover this part and then we move forward. So as you can see in this picture, sequence to sequence model is actually quite, you know, it's nothing, it's nothing very fancy. It's just like uh, you combine a model with another model. So basically you have a two parts, as I mentioned before. The first part is the encoder, right? The encoder uh, normally is a RNN. So basically you, um, you, you feed some input into this encoder. And then this encoder will compress, process, and you know, to, because you know, your input, especially for um, speech signals, they're very noisy and they're, they include a lot of, you know, redundant information. So what the encoder doing here is trying to, you know, compress everything into a compact format. So it will compact all the information from, from X1 
x2, x3, all the input into this uh, small vector. I, I, I represent it using a uh, yellow circle. And then this vector, this compressed vector, will be fed as an input to another RNA structure, which is called decoder. So your decoder will take this um, vector, this uh, circle, yellow circle, as the input, and then it will decode all the information that your encoder has encoded before. And then it will try to, you know, uh, for example, to, you know, uh, for the machine translation task, it will, you know, uh, for example, the input is Chinese, and then it will give you some output like English, like Y1, Y2, Y3. So this is the brief introduction of, um, of the sequence to sequence model. I think you guys um, don't have any trouble with it. Then go to this part. This is the details, how this um, sequence to sequence model, the encoder and decoder looks like. So this part, it's the encoder, all right? This is the vector that you, you after you compressing all the information of your input, this is your decoder, which will receive all the compressed information from your encoder and then uh, doing the decoding, the decoding process to generate output one by one. Um, so for encoder, uh, this is a bi-directional alias cam, right? So you input some formats, x1 to xt, and then there will be uh, hacks from the very bottom, from the very first layer to the second layer, and then to the last layer. And then you will get something, uh, you will get some hidden state from the last layer, which, uh, which is um, H1, H2, H3, and so on here. Uh, this is just the one representation uh, for the hidden state. Uh, if you read some paper, then you might find that uh, some, some researcher also using the final hidden state here, the final hidden state here, as the input uh, to, your, to your decoder. So this is another option. But for for this homework, I I will just use this um representation. But I wanna I, I wanna you, all of you guys know that this is not only this is not the only way to encode your your information. You can encode all the you know all of this uh, hidden state and take the average, or you can only um take the hidden state from the very last layer as the input to your decoder. And then your encoder, once your encoder, uh, once your decoder receives the input, this um, small yellow circle, um, it will try to predict something step by step. So basically, uh, because normally the first symbol, uh, the first input should be SOS, state, uh, start of the sentence. So the first cell would receive two inputs. The first one should be SOS. The second one should be this yellow circle, a very compressed uh, information from an encoder. And then it will try to output something here, uh, which is Y1, right? And this is a recursive process. So basically, once you get Y1, you will feed Y1 as the input to your second step. So basically, Y1 becomes Y1 should be the uh, output of the uh, first time step, and then it becomes the input of your second time step. So Y1 becomes the input, and then you will also receive the hidden state from the previous uh, from the previous cell. You also get two input, and then you doing this recursively, and and then you will generate a uh, hopefully a um, human readable sequence. Okay, so this is how uh, what Vina sequence to sequence model works. It is very straightforward, very simple. It has no attention. But uh, as you can as you can notice that there's a huge drawback of this framework. Uh, that is uh, it is too ambitious. So this framework, especially the encoder, trying to 
compress compress everything into one single vector. But this is a problematic because um, because uh, for some NLP tasks, uh, especially machine translation, your input would be very very long, like hundreds or thousands uh, uh, lines of sequence. In that case. Uh, it's very very hard to you know compress everything, every information, every detail into one single vector, um, and then um, don't lose any information. That's too ambitious. So th this is problematic. Um, so this is why uh, for 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 homework for part two or some some uh, for some specific NLP tasks, uh, Valina sequence to sequence model performs not that good. So how do you solve this issue? Um, some people might say, uh, oh, what, my, why we, um, why cannot we uh, just, you know, input this um, yellow circle, not only to the first time step, but all the time step uh, in the decoder. Like this. This is an option to alleviate the problem that I mentioned before. Because I said, uh, you trying to compress everything, every information in one single vector, but only use that vector once at the very beginning. And this is problematic because, you know, um, if your sentence is too long, you will lose information. Um, so this is another option to alleviate this problem, but this is also not good. Okay, so go to this, um, this, um, this graph. This is what I, uh, what I mentioned before. So instead of just, feed your hidden state once only once uh to your to your decoder you can feed it to each cell in your decoder but this is also problematic why because if you're doing this you might alleviate the problem but you can you cannot solve the problem because the hidden state here it stores all the information from H1, H2, H3 to HT. And all of this information, you know, are, are equally from the perspective of uh, your decoding. So basically they are equally important for your decoding. But this is uh, another issue because um, um, again, for the machine translation task, uh, Yeah, for your, for the machine translation task, um, the input here um, should have you know a little relationship with the uh, with the um, you know the hidden state uh, like H five at six at at seven, which is at the end of your sentence. Um, um, it it probably have a higher chance to tightly related to the very first. Uh, you know, hidden state like like H one and H two, so they are not equally important for a specific time step. So this is why this solution is not good. It cannot, you know, solve the uh, solve the problem. Okay. Um. So far, um, could you understand all the concept that I mentioned? So I mentioned two things. First. What is the sequence to sequence model? What is Valina sequence to sequence model? And then one optional solution to alleviate the Valina sequence to sequence model by feeding all the hidden state to each time step of your decoder. If you understand it, could you please um, type one, please? Thank you. If you cannot understand it, then you, you can type zero. Okay, oh, okay, so seems everybody is okay with this. Um, okay, then. I will move on. If you have any question, you can just, okay, you can, uh, yeah, you can, I will give you uh, uh, like, but it was uh, all good was. Yeah, could you, could you, could you speak? What's your question? Yeah, it's all right. I will give you like two or three minutes. Um, Gladys, can, can you, uh, can you just open your microphone? Could you speak? Are the H1, H2, in a saturated probability distribution over the possible uh, vocabulary? 
not 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 this is just the hidden state this is not the uh the output right so basically if you want to get the probability for a for a character or vocabulary basically you need to doing a softmax right but there's no softmax here this is an end-to-end -end system we don't uh you know uh, make the prediction uh in the encoder part we we, we make the prediction at the end of the ink uh, decoder in the Valina sequence sequence model, is the compressed vector has the same dimension um, as the hidden state. Um, not necessary. I mean, uh, it really depends on how you um, how you define your model. So basically, um, the dimension of H one, H two, H three here would be related to your dimension, uh, your hidden state of your LSTM, right? It doesn't necessary to have any relationship with your input. Um, compressed vector is the same. Oh, so, uh, okay, I, I, I think I have misunderstood your question. So you are asking if the compressed vector, this uh, yellow single, uh, yellow yellow circle here has the same dimension with the hidden state. It depends. Sometimes you um, one option is you take the average. You take the average from H1, H2, H3, and so on. Then you will get, you are, uh, the dimension will not be changed, right? But you can also concatenate them together, like, like what I'm doing right now. You can concatenate them together. So then your dimension will be, uh, be much larger. Does this make sense to you? So this is really depends on how you will implement your model. And there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of options here. Uh, and I want to uh, emphasize this again. So this is um, not the only way you implement the sequence to sequence model. Um, you can use the hidden state here as the input of your decoder. Um, you can not just uh, concatenate the hidden state. You can take the average of them, uh, or you can, you know, just select some of them. Uh, it really depends on your implementation. Then it doesn't have we uh, have we multiply it with a matrix which is learnable. Uh, okay, you are you are asking the question. Uh, you are you are answering the question. Okay, okay. Uh, let's move on. So uh, I hopefully you don't have any issues more with the Valina sequence sequence model. Then I just mentioned the issue here because H1, H2, H3, H4, they are all equally important um, from the perspective of eco the, the decoder, but this is not the case, right? So that is why we need attention patterns. Uh, I think uh, the previous presentation have already covered attention already, but I will repeat some uh, impo important concepts here because this is this is extremely uh, important uh, for this homework. So how we do the attention? Let's go back here. Okay, take a look at this picture. So this is H1, H2, H3. This is the output from your uh, encoded, right? And I will use, again, I will use this uh, small yellow circle uh, as the representation of um, the concatenation or average of all hidden state. I will save all the information into one single vector. So how can we do the tension stuff? Uh, I, uh, I probably would give you a, uh, give you a, a very uh, simple example. Uh, Okay, um, still let's let's just use the example of um, uh, machine translation, all right? Um, we are trying to translate Chinese from uh, some some Chinese sentence to English, all right? Um, let me come up with a um, simple example. Uh, okay, uh, so this is. Uh, uh, this is uh, this is Chinese, all right? And uh, um, this is uh, the English. I just give you a very uh, simple example, uh, like Um, 
Uh, it, it's all right if you um, don't understand Chinese. I will explain that later. All right, so this is a Chinese. 我爱深度学习,它很有趣. And then I will explain its meaning uh, using English. So the translated version of English should be, I um, love deep um, learning um, it is I'm um, trying to align them together. It is um, interesting. Okay, so uh, yeah, there should be a line of this chart. Okay, so in Chinese, wo means I. So this should be one pair, right? Love means I in in Chinese. So I will just use the uh, the rectangle to you know to mark them. So you will, you will find that your output, um, for example, for the love, for the love, for the word love, it has a very, very tight relationship with this specific input. Does it have any relationship with this one? With the interesting, your true? Uh, probably, but it has a very little, you know, you know you just have a you know um, a, a loose relationship with uh, with uh, with this with this word compared to the uh, compared to this word. And another example is that uh, take a look of the uh, word eat. Eat actually refers to deep learning, right? I love deep learning. It is interesting. So I'm I'm talking about deep learning is interesting. So eat equals to deep learning. That means in your input, the word eat has a tight relationship with this word. And also this word. 深度学习 means deep learning, Chinese. So, and it has a loose relationship with all the remaining uh, stuff like uh, like like this one, like this one, like this one. So this is what so this is what called attention. So basically, for your output, I don't want to you know uh, distribute my attention equally to all the input, but I want to focus. I want to focus on a specific part of my input. Um, I just give you two example. Uh, the love, the eat here. So this is why I said in this example, if you just feed everything to your to your to a decoder, uh, it's just time step uh, of your decoder. Uh, it is problematic because you are treating them equally important, and that's not the case. I just give you two example to show you why that's not the case, because um, some of your output will have a much higher relationship with some part of the input. So that's why we need attention. Uh, so how to translate it to into into you know uh, code or or some kind of visualization. Imagine that we have um okay let's just um yeah let's focus on this um this yellow vector here h1 h2 h3 and so on they are the output from your encoder, each of the hidden state encodes some information from your input. And uh, all of this hidden state has a corresponding weight. I will use alpha one, um, alpha two, alpha three, and so on to represent the weight. In the previous example, we feed everything equally. To, to, to each time step of your D 
equal to in this case, then the R for should be something like, uh, they, they would have the same value, right? Like 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01. So basically they're they are all equal, but this is wrong as I uh, emphasized many times. So we want some part of the, um, the hidden state have a higher weight than others. For example, uh, let's focus on this output, right? The Y2. For Y2, it's very likely that the R for 2 here has a much higher value than R for, say, R for T, because R for T encodes the information at the, at the very end of this sentence, right? So it, it has a um, lower chance to have, um, you know, tight relationship with that. So basically, uh, what I'm talking about, I'll give you a concrete example then, uh, probably R for 2 equal to something like 0 0.8, R for 1 equal to something like 0 0.1, R for 3 equals to something like 0 0.05, 0 0.01, 0 0.01, and probably R for T, uh, which is 0 0.00001. So yeah, I, I want a kind of effect like this, a kind, a kind of, you know, uh, uh, a kind of, you know, uh, weight like this, because this is um, what we call attention, because for L2, I want L2 to focus more uh, on, on H2 or H1. So how can we do this? Okay, so for now, could you understand why the weight is not, uh, sometimes it's, uh, why, why we want the weight is not the same? Can you understand it? Okay, okay, good. Yeah, so this is very important. This is very important. This is, um, uh, this is actually the main technique that you are used uh, in your homework. So make sure you understand it. Okay, so how can I calculate the value 0 0.8 and 0 0.1 stuff? How can I calculate it? Uh, it's actually uh, a lot of, um, a lot of options here, but I will introduce a very simple or most commonly used uh, uh, method to calculate the, the attention value. Okay. Again, please remember this notation because I have a lot of notation uh, later. So please remember this notation. I will use the, the yellow circle to represent all the hidden state, all right? all the hidden state. So basically this yellow circle will save all the information from H1 to H2, H, H, HT. Okay, let's go back, uh, let's, let's uh, move forward. Again, H here is the output of my encoder. This magical vector somehow so save, store all the information of my input then how can I calculate uh, the score, the weight uh, in the example that we are uh, just, just go through? So basically you can imagine the attention like a, um, a, um, a database. So basically imagine that you have a database here. Uh, if you have um, for, if you have been familiar with the database, then whenever you access the database to re to you know extract some information, you will give a query, right? You will give a query. So this is a query. In your database, it is a dictionary-like database. So it has two colon. The first colon is key. The second colon is uh, um, is a value. So basically, when when you uh, you know get some information, trying to get some information in your data set, is that you got a query, and then you go through each key from key one, key two, pm. You're trying to find a key which is most familiar, uh, which is most uh, similar to your query. Uh, for example, K two. For example, K two looks very very similar to your query then I will say, oh, probably that's the information that I want. And then you will output the value of this key as the result. 
So this is how the database works. And the way that we calculate attention weight here is actually quite similar or actually the same. Uh, let's uh, delete this part. Okay. So again, the yellow circle here, it stores all the information from your encoder. Now you want to use this, um, this circle, uh, this piece of information or this vector to generate two special vector. The blue one is the key. The green one is the value. How you generate the key and the, and the value vector, quite simple, you just uh, use a uh, linear transformation. So basically you add a linear, you add a linear uh, layer uh, between these two, you doing a linear trans transformation to transform your uh, your hidden state vector to uh, to a key vector and a value vector. So now you have a three vector. One is the uh, the hidden state vector, the outer from your encoder, and a, a special key vector, a special value vector. So how, how to calculate the, the weight? Basically, uh, you will feed. Uh, so, okay, so let's go through uh, the decoding process again. The decoding stuff will take the output of your second layer as the input and feed it to to the next time step, right? Uh, so how we um, uh, how we get some information like uh, which part of the input I should focus. So basically, you will send this two vector as the input to this um, uh, uh, pink circle. This pink circle represents a special operation, right? So this pink circle has a three input, the key. The first one is the key. The second one is the value. The third one is the hidden state here. It's the hidden state of your second layer, right? This is the first layer, this is second layer. Uh, uh, after your second layer, the second layer will produce a, a, a hidden state, right? This hidden state is actually, is, is exactly the query that I mentioned in the previous database example. So this is the hidden state uh, of your uh, of your LSTM, right? And this is, uh, uh, which is equivalent to the query. So let's explain a bit uh, what it's doing inside uh, in this um, pink operation, uh, this pink circle. Again, the pink operation has a three input, the key, the value, the query. We already got the query because at each time step, we can calculate the, uh, the output, uh, the hidden state of your second layer, the, fi the final layer, right? And then we can um, calculate the cosine similarity between your query and the key. Uh, yeah, again, in the database example, we have a query, we go through all the key from the first key to the last key, and we want to find the most um, similar key. So we, we, can, we can get the similarity using cosine similarity, right? So basically your key vector would have the same dimension with your query vector. So when you implement this model, you need to be careful about this point. You need to set the key dimension equal to your hidden state dimension. I mean the decoder, the decoder hidden state dimension. So basically key vector should have the same dimension of your query. Then you can calculate the similarity, the cosine similarity, right? So if you take a look over here, you will find that in the first step, I will calculate the cosine similarity between these two vector, the query Q and the vector and the, and the vector key, right? 
then I will know, um, for example, this output is something like 0 0.1, 0 0.A, 0 0.01, blah, 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 right? This is what we used before, right? So each number here represents the similarity, right? That means the query um, is a very, very similar to the key in the first and the second time step. And this kind of information tells us that probably in this time step, I need to focus on the first and second time step. But this is not end. I mean, the cause and similarity uh, is only used to calculate this, uh, uh, this vector, uh, this, um, this, uh, this array, right? This array is, uh, is only store, storing some, some numeric values, but we want a vector, right? So that's why we need to multiply this vector with the value here to get the real value. Okay, uh, this part is probably a little bit complex. I will go through it uh, very quickly again. Try to follow me, all right? Uh, you have a question, uh, I will ask them uh, um, later. I will go through this very quick again. We have a vector. We have a vector, a magical vector, which is store all the information of your input. And then this vector is also the output of your encoder. We do two linear transformation to transform this um, vector to a key vector and a value vector. The key vector and the value vector is exactly the same thing uh, for uh, like, like it's exactly the same thing like uh, in, in your data set. Uh, it's like a dictionary, the key is the index, the value is the, the real value you store in your data set, right? So we have a three, we have a two special vector here. The first one is the key. The second one is the, the value. In the decoding process, because our feed uh, the the hidden state uh, out of my uh, last layer as the input to the to the next time step. But before feeding it, I want I want some I want some you know special information to tell to tell me uh, which part I need to focus uh, uh, on my on my input, and that's information. I, I, the importance of that information, I already explained it uh, using the Chinese to English translation example. The way we calculate the uh, this special information, this special vector, is that we use this um, pink circle or pink operation to do that. Basically, this operation has a three input: the hidden state from your alias cam which is also the query and uh, the key and the value we just calculated before from the hidden state, right? So we have a three input. Query, first we'll calculate the similarity between your query with your key. They have the same dimension, so it's very, uh, it's trivial to, to calculate the cosine similarity. Once we get the similarity, we know which part we're gonna focus, then we are use the result. We are times this result with the uh, with the value. The value is the real stuff we store in the data set. Uh, in the data set, and then we will get a context vector, which is very informative, and it can tell us which part of the input we need to focus on. So basically, for each cell here, it has three input. The first input is the white one. It's the previous output. Um, and uh, the hidden state from your first layer, this is uh, this is exactly the same uh, for the Valina LSTM, right? Uh, yeah, maybe I can go back to here. Yeah, see, there are only two input for the Valina uh, sequence to sequence model, the, the hidden state from the first layer, from the previous layer, and uh, the output. So there are two, there are only two input here. But for the attention case, you have a three input. The Y1, the hidden state from your previous layer, and a very special 
context vector we just calculated using this um, pink operation, which is a C1. C1 stores the information that uh, tells you which part uh, of your input you need to focus on specifically. So basically, for your first time step, this C1 probably will tell you you need to focus on the first or second time step. And for this one, C2, it probably will tell you you need to focus on the second and the third time step and so on and so forth. Okay, uh, I will stop here and uh, read you guys' question. I, I know this part is, uh, is a bit complex. Um, can you repeat what is query here? Query is nothing special. It's just the, uh, the hidden state of your LSTM, right? This is your, let me clean everything here. This is your first cell, right? The first cell will have an output, which is the hidden state of this cell. This is not output. Uh, this is not output, which, it, which should be the second hidden state of your LSTM. And how did we get the key vector and the vector from H? I think I have already explained that, right? You can use the linear transformation your linear transformation is actually another matrix that you need to learn uh, during your training. I think you can repeat this attention concept. I have already repeated that. I think query is the output of the hidden state. Okay, um, so we have only one K. So for each sequence, we only have one K, but a multiple Q. Exactly, why we only have one K? Could you, could you explain that to me? Why we only have a one K? Why, why we don't have a multiple K? That is because this X is, is a fixed, right? This is a fixed number, uh, a fixed vector. It is store all the information for your input. The key is just another, it's just another representation of this uh, hidden state. It doesn't make any sense you make a lot of key, right? Um, the key is something you need to, it's just like the index in your data set. You, you, you cannot change your data set, right? Uh, change the index of your data set, right? You need to keep it fixed. The value is, is something that you store in your data set. So basically your data set, once you create the data set, you will not change it, right? You will not change it. Within this specific epoch, you will not change it. Your data set is a fixed. And then, uh, but your query is not fixed. Your query is uh, all the different because the, 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 the hidden state here would be very different from the hidden state here and it would be very different from the hidden state, uh, the hidden state here and so on and so forth. Does that, uh, does this make sense to you? Um, how do we apply those linear transformation? Make sure that they are calculating key and values. Uh, you cannot make sure they are calculated key as well. Basically you need to uh, initialize a, uh, a linear layer, which, which, which can be uh, you know, randomly initialized. But again, during your training process, your network will learn uh, how to set the weight for, for those linear layer to, to get a more, to get a higher quality key and a higher quality value. So this is something you learn, right? This is not something you can get immediately at the very beginning. Don't we um, need to compute weights for the first cell, SOS? Are uh, you uh, compute the weights? Uh, actually not, actually not. Um, so the, actually this is not very important. I mean, you can calculate it but it's actually not important in, in, practic in practice. Uh, um, normally SOS is just a, a, a tag, right? It has no special meaning. Um, uh, you, can, you, can, you can calculate the weight for it, but uh, if you don't do that, it will not influence your performance too much. If H is a vector and Q is a vector, then their cosine similarity should be a scalar. No, uh, I mean the cosine similarity of each element Key is K1, Km. Your query is Q1, Qm, right? I calculate the similarity like, like in this manner, all right? So it is not a scalar, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a list of a scalar. So this is a cosine similarity uh, for, for K1 and uh, Q1. This is the second similarity for K2 and Q2, all right? Uh, I hope this makes sense. Um, 
Okay, if K is a vector and Q is a vector, okay, I, I've already answered that. What happens if the number of Q is less or greater than the number of hidden state? Uh, what happened? You are not make that happen. I, I said it before, you, uh, you are set them, you, 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 you need to set them equal with each other. This is a restrictment. Otherwise, how, how can you calculate the cosine similarity element wise, right? So basically when you implement your model, you need to specifically set the hidden state of your key be equal to your um, hidden state of your LSTM. But the value, I mean, the state of value here is, a, uh, is, is, is you know, is a variable. Uh, it doesn't have any relationship to your, to your key and the query because basically you calculate, you only calculate the similarity between query and the key, right? They must have the same similarity. But in practice, we normally set the key, the dimension of key equal to the dimension of value. Uh, what happened if the number of Q is solved? Okay, right now it's that. Does this all happen in the decoder? Yeah, this is all happen in the decoder. For each part, you need to, you need to get the hidden state um, from this time step. And then you calculate the C1. C1 is a special vector which store all the information that tells you which part you need to focus uh, for your for your input. Uh, okay, I will use one one more minute to answer the question. All right, uh, for each time step, there's only one query, but it will, it will compare it with all keys from one to m. Right, this is exactly what I say uh, in the data set example. Right, when you when you when you try to extract something from your data set, you need to know which which record is uh, is uh, is the it's the most you know suitable one, right? So, the way you find that uh, most suitable uh, record is that you you go through all the key to see which one is uh, is the most of, uh, similar to your to your query. <sighs> it's the it's the dimension of hidden state of the same of the. Uh, uh, I I think I've already answered that. So ki is a vector ki. Ki is not a vector. Ki is a, uh, uh, yeah, Ki, um, again, it, it actually depends. Ki can be a vector. Uh, it depends on how you um, get to your hidden state. If you concatenate all, all the hidden state like this, then H1 should be uh, a vector. HT should be a vector. But if you just calculate the, the average, then it will become a scalar. But uh, again, it depends on your implementation. <laughs> Uh, got it, sense. And have you mentioned that it's only one K? Then what does K one K two? This is just K one K two. This is K. There's only one K. K one K two is the element of this uh, of this vector. Your vector has some dimension, right? This is the first dimension, second dimension, right? Uh, so the decoded sequence must have the same lines. No, not not necessarily. So. This is um, how can you ensure that your output has the same lens with your input? I mean, for 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 the example that I used the the machine translation uh, example, your Chinese uh, is uh, clearly not the same lens with your output, right? Uh, so your output here, your out, the lens of your output uh, is unnecessary to be the same of your input lens. So are the linear layers producing the key and a vector learning what ideal values of a query are some components correspond to you? Uh, learning what ideal values of a query are some components correspond to which key and say, could you, could you paraphrase your question? Uh, I, I, my, my English is bad, uh, especially reading capability. Sorry about that. Um, can I unmute? Yeah, 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 definitely. Hey, Ethan, uh, I had a question about the hidden vector there. So it's the output of the decoder or the uh, the encoder. And how does it remain uh, like position invariant? Like if you if H2 is of high importance to H5 in one sentence. Um, um, so which part invariance could you repeat that part? Yeah, so I'm wondering if like one word has high importance to later in the sentence, like H2 has importance is important to uh, H9 or something. Mm -hmm. And then in another sentence, there's another pair of words that are in 
different positions, right? H3 and H4 or something. Oh yeah, so that's exactly. why, uh, yeah, this is a very good question. So basically, so that's why you need to pass everything into the same lens. Just like what do you do in the homework three part, uh, three, three part two, right? So your input would be something like this, right? But you are padded to the same lens. This is all zero. Does this make sense? So for the padding part, if your if your model is um is learning well, then it probably will attach a very very low weight for this padding zero. So that's why uh, that's how you're handling the um uh the 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 variable the variable lens of your input. It seems to me like it's all it's it's assigning a weight. I know this is false, but it seems like it's like if H if it learns a really high weight for H two. Mm -hmm. um, assigned to like H5, it wouldn't be able to say like, oh, H2 might have like a high, uh, should pay high attention to some other H that isn't that same combination. I'm not quite sure I have a studio question. So you are saying if H2 has a higher value than H5 would what? Uh, yeah, could you- I'm just, I'm, I'm wondering like how it remains like position invariant um to like where the the words in the sentences are i guess where the sentence are mm. like in the cnns how we had like a scanning mlp so like it, the the issue of combinations wasn't an issue um i could just be fundamentally like misunderstanding um, um so. if you go back to this part so basically so this is a this is just normal lsm right so one input will produce one hidden state, H1, and H2, and H3, and so on. And in your question, you say, um, if the weight, say, the H2 has a higher weight, let's put it to 0 0.9, OK? Um, uh, so I, I, I still have, um, I, I still cannot understand why, why this is related to the, uh, the input lens. So, uh, are you saying that if um, H5 is um, is some padding or, or something like that? Uh, I'm saying if that's like a word, like if, because H2 is like the, the second word kind yeah. of output and H5 is the fifth word output. How do you assign an importance to those for this? How to assign? Uh, yeah, this is exactly what I, uh, I say for, uh, so basically, you store all the information here, right? H1, you, you just, okay, so, so in this example, we just concatenate all the hidden state into one, one vector. So H equal H1, H2, H3, and so on, right? So this is the, the hidden state. This hidden state would, would, you know, would produce a two vector, which is a key. The key and the value should have the same lens uh, with your hidden state, right? And yeah. because, and here, as I said before, you need to force that the, the output from, from this place has the same dimension uh, with your key. So basically, this vector here is also have the same lens with your key, right? So let's yeah. say uh, this is a query. Then you, can, you calculate the similarity between the query and the key, you get some a, a kind of list like 0 0.1, 0 0.9, or 0 0.8, 0 point something. And then you calculate, you use this, um, you use, use this array, um, multiply this array with this, uh, multiply this vector with your value vector, you'll get exactly the same lens of output, right? The output should be have the same lens um, of your hidden state. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay, thank you. Oh, this is, uh, I need to review a lot of stuff. Okay, guys, I, uh, I decide to, uh, let me, uh, yeah, so I, I think this is also, this is probably the most difficult part. So I, I, I'm happy to um, put more time on here. Uh, can I think of these um, products of, um, Can I think of these uh, products of uh, Q and uh, uh, with K highlighting the corresponding index of V? 
thus indicating which components. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, is the context vector normalized by the weights, cosine similarity? Is the context vector normalized by the weight? The context vector normalized by the weight. Uh, your weight should sum to one, right? So you don't need to, it's already normalized. So your weight is actually a, just like the probability. Oh, okay, yeah, I, I got you. So yeah, yeah, if, you are, if your weight is a sum not to one, then you probably need to normalize it. But this doesn't, I mean, this, uh, this will not, you know, again, will not affect the performance too much. Um, if K is the, yeah, I, I actually it, it affects a little bit. So basically um, there's a paper uh, introduced another attention technique. Basically uh, whenever you calculate, you get an energy, the energy is, the, is, the, is actually the cosine similarity between these two vectors. Then it will divide it by the dimension of your query. Uh, because uh, if, your, if your energy is too high, I mean, if the, if the cosine similarity is too high, then, uh, and then if you are using a sigmoid function, that means your gradient would be very, uh, would be very small. So you can, you can normalize it. Yeah, this is a good question. Um, uh, if, the, uh, if the K is the vector and K, KI is the scalar, how do we calculate similarity for each uh, case of vector KI? Is, uh, I think I've already answered that, right? Uh, the cosine similarity is element-wise. It's not. Uh, okay, okay, yeah. Um, yeah, so actually it's not a scalar. I, I may be misspoken. So basically your KI is a matrix. It's, it's like a matrix. Uh, the first element is a vector, uh, has some dimension. The second is also has some dimension, then you, um, you calculate. And then uh, when I go to the coding part, uh, it will be very clear. How do we concatenate C Y I or combination? Uh, okay, you just you just concatenate them. So basically, you just concatenate them. Uh, if you have a three vectors, each of them has a um, dimension of one hundred, then your output should be have uh, a dimension of three hundred. But again, it depends on your implementation. You don't necessarily to concatenate them. You can average them. You can do some you know uh, some some other um, fancy transformation. Uh, yeah, or you can linear combine them. Yeah, uh, that's also possible. The, okay, we, we only have a two question. Huh? Um, the, the output sequence must have the same lens as key vector uh, and value vector. The output sequence dimension should have the, not the sequence lens, but the output dimension should have the same lens with the key vector, but not necessary to a value vector. But in practice, we, we normally, well, you know, set the, the dimension of your key vector equal to your value vector. Um, since the linear layers between edge vector and the key vector and the value vector are fixed in dimension, does it mean that output sequence is always a fixed in lens? Uh, again, not necessarily. Um, you first, okay, okay. I, I think I have to answer all the questions. Um, but this part is very, uh, probably the most difficult part. Um, Probably mo most difficult part of um, of this homework. Okay, um, I just I, I just check. How many of you have understanding? Um, could you could you type something on on on? on, on... <coughs> zero point seven. <laughs> yeah, I mean zero point five is a is a good yeah, but um, okay maybe glad uh, Gladys I uh, I can't hold a personal meeting with you. Um, Maybe tomorrow, if you have a lot of, uh, maybe, um, yeah, when, when, when this homework is released, if you still have some questions, maybe we can do a personal meeting like, like before, right? Okay. Okay, then this is attention. This is tension. Basically, attention is not so fancy. You just introduce another, you know, very useful vector CI here. CI just store the information. Um, CI is just, in, in, uh, just store the information. Uh, which well tells you uh, which part of your input you need to focus on. All right. Uh, yeah. So all the attention does is here. Guys, please uh, mute yourself. Thank you. Um, and uh, then this is attention. This is attention. Uh, this is uh, this is the sequence to sequence model without attention. This is also the sequence sequence model without attention. 
then I will show you the picture, the graph for the sequence to sequence model with attention, which looks like something like this. Yeah, so basically you got a sequence of input. All the input will be sent from the bottom to next layer to next layer, and then you will get a uh, some some output, right? You will uh, I will use this um, green circle to represent the output. You do two linear transformation to get a key for information retrieval, uh, and the value value is the, the real information you you store in your data set. And then I, because we are using attention here, we'll introduce a new vector CI, C2. CI, C2 are calculated by using this uh, magical uh, pink circle. So basically you will, the pink circle operation will take three input, the key, the value, and the query. The query is just uh, the hidden state from your, from your, from your LSTM. And then we'll use this formula to calculate C. Once we get C, we'll concatenate C, C, I, Y, I, and this is H, I. It's a sweet vector together um, as a whole. And then we feed it as the input to the next time step. And then we, we're doing this recursively. So the magic is here. The magic is the C, I here. The C, I stores a, a very useful information to tell you uh, which part you need to focus on, or which part you, you, should, you probably should you know, throw away. Okay. We are very close to the end, guys. <clears throat> and this is not end. Uh, so that's why I say uh, this form is a disaster uh, for most of people. This is just sequence to sequence model plus attention, but this is not S -A -L -A -S. So LAS is probably using another special LAS time structure, which I mentioned before, which is called pyramid, pyramid uh, RNN. This is the normal LAS time. I think all of you are very, very familiar with it already, but it has an issue. It's very slow. It's a super slow, especially for whenever your input is very, very long, like thousands, 1,000, 2,000 uh, characters, uh, you are, you are, you know, this part, this part, I mean, the, you, you, uh, the process of passing information from the previous layer to the next layer could be very, very costly. Uh, in the paper, it just say, uh, if you are using BLSTM, the normal LSTM for training the LAS or training the training the data set, it will cost you like one month. You can imagine that, how slow it is. So to solve this issue, the researcher just proposed a new architecture, which is named pyramid LSTM. So it's just like a pyramid, right? Uh, this is nothing very uh, difficult to understand because we need to, because the reason why it is slow, I just said, um, when you pass the information from the previous layer to the next layer, and this is costly. So basically we can uh, reduce this kind of process, these operations uh, by halving the length of the time step each layer. For example, the T is um, eight here, all right? Just say the T is eight here. Then for the next layer, the T will be halved. So basically your T would become four and your T would become two, et cetera, et cetera. So basically, uh, originally you have a output uh, which has eight elements, but with a pyramid structure, uh, you reduce it from eight to two. So this is, um, uh, this is a great redu reduction. Um, again, uh, refer to the uh, statistics uh, the, or the experimental result from the original paper. If you if you are using pyramid LSTM for your encoder, not only you will uh, reduce your training time greatly, you will also improve your model performance. So in this homework, you need to, you must to you must uh, implement this structure by yourself from scratch, all right? But this is not very hard. I mean, uh, uh, as long as you uh, understand LSTM, I think it's not very hard for you guys to uh, implement this one. So basically you uh, you just half the 
the the the time step each time, um, and that's it. Okay, so could you understand this part? I think this one is easier, much easier than the nails time, right? Then attention, right? If you understand, you just type one, right? Thank you. For understanding that my shoes. Uh, Chenzhou, we probably we can discuss later. Uh, yeah, if you have any doubts. How do you have the time step concatenate two vectors? Uh, yeah, good question. This is the input, right? This is input, a hidden state from the first cell. This is not input um, from the second cell, right? First, you concatenate these two hidden state into one vector and then pass that into this, um, in, into this cell. So basically this cell and the, 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 input, the input dimension of this cell will be double to this cell. L1, L0 is just a normal LSTM layer. L1 is the pyramids layer. L2 is also another pyramids layer. Um, and the pyramid layer normally has a, a double uh, hidden state um, compared to the, uh, the, the normal LSTM layer. Uh, how do you actually have in it, like uh, implementation wise? Yeah, I just mentioned that you get the output from your first cell, you get the output from your second cell, you can cat name them together, together and then your dimension will be double, right? Okay, I give you the concrete number, 40, all right? The dimension is 40, then your, then this vector should be 40 plus 40 equal to 80, right? And the dimension of here is 80. Can you understand this part? Uh, Justin, can you understand this part? This is very implementation wise, right? Uh, what the lens is, uh, oh, oh uh, I like this question. I really hope someone would ask that. Yeah, what happened? You, you give me the answer. What do you all do if the, uh, the lens is an odd, it's an odd number? Pad it to make it even. Exactly. You can pad it or you can truncate it. Yeah. And uh, I can tell you that um, the the choice between padding or truncating is it, actually quite similar. So you can pad in it, you can truncate it. Really depends on you. But this is a very good question. Uh, and also in your implementation, you need to consider this situation. Okay, good question. By having how do you get next layer state, heat, uh, this, not just hidden state value. Again, um, so this is just a normal LSTM cell, right? Um, nothing special we, uh, except that it has a double hidden state. Uh, previously, the hidden state is the 40, then that means your input should have a dimension of 40, but because you concatenate the output from the first cell and the second cell, uh, you, you got something like 80 dimension and you, because, um, because the cell in your pyramid structure has a double dimension, um, then you, 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 uh, you should have no, uh, you know, shape errors. Uh, the concatenate vector are not hidden state, but the output vector from the previous layer cell. Um, output vector, the output vector should be, should be the, should be the hidden state, right? The output vector is exactly the, the, the hidden state from your previous layer, isn't it? You only do the softmax uh, when you are doing the prediction, right? In the in the decoding part. So this is encoder. We don't use softmax to to normalize the probability to get a probability. So basically everything come out of your 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 LSTM cell is the hidden state. Uh if we are using bidirectional LSTM, the output dimension is double, then the input is, uh, yeah, exactly. When you are using uh, bidirectional uh, uh, LSTM, then everything should be double. Yeah, good job, uh, and just a good catch. Sounds like there's no, uh, there's no reason we shouldn't replace all the multiple layer LSTM with the pyramid ones. Um, not really, I mean, um, so basically, uh, it really depends on the task. So again, for the formula to, to sequence, uh, 
um, task because for me it's very special, right? So when I pronounce a sound like ah, uh, then my my first for me and the second for me probably are the same, and probably the third for me they're all ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. So there's a lot of you know repeated stuff here, and there's a lot of redundant stuff here. So if you are using Pyramid uh, LSTM, then you can you know uh, compress this um, information uh, to something more compact, right? But for some you know, but again you are losing some information. But in this case, you are losing some information that not that very useful. They're redundant, but it really depends on the task. If you are doing some task, all the input are very important. Then probably your LSTM, your pyramid LSTM would perform uh, worse than your LSTM. But again, normally we are not use this structure because it will lose information. Um, we only use it when our sequence is very very long and a lot of redundant information. Does this sense? Does this make sense to you? Okay, sounds like okay. Not able to see the entire screen. Uh, okay. How about now? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I will. I will. I will move forward. Okay. Uh, I will give you a very quick recap from the very top. All right. We are. We are almost down. <laughs> sequence to sequence model. Right. This is very easy. And this is the Wallina sequence to sequence model. This is the encoder. We encode everything for one vector and uh, feed that one vector to the decoder and then make the prediction. Yeah, and again, we only make the prediction here, right? We only, this is our output, and this is a hidden state. And because Wallina sequence to sequence model has some issues, um, the first option to solve this issue is by passing the hidden state to each time step of your decoder. But again, this is not a good, a very good solution. Um, the good solution is, uh, is to use attention technique. <coughs> attention technique <coughs> attention technique is um it's just involving a new vector context vector that tells you which part of your input you need to focus on right um and then the whole picture of, of it would be like this you do two linear transformation to transform your hidden state to key vector to value vector and then you do uh, you do this, uh, you know, this, uh, this, uh, this special operation to calculate the context vector. Basically, you, it's, it's, it's just like doing the same thing when you uh, um, extract some information from the data set. You calculate the similarity uh, uh, between your query and your key to get a similarity array, and then use that array to get the value, right? The value in your, you know, data set. And then put everything together, it will look something like this. Sequence to sequence model plus attention. But again, this model has some issue whenever your input sequence is very long. Uh, it's training very, very slowly. So uh, we introduce a new RN structure, which is called PBLSTM, Pyramid LSTM, which looks like this. And then we, again, we replace this part with this part. We'll get, finally, we'll get LS10, LS. Can you understand this part? If you understand, you type one, okay? This is the end of uh, the visualization today. <sighs> okay, good, good. Um, oh, actually, this is not the end. Oh my God. This is, um, actually, there's a uh, new techniques you need to mention. Uh, I need to mention here. The first one is teacher forcing. Okay, but this it, this two is very simple. Okay, imagine the case. This is our this is our decoder, all right? Uh, normally the decoder, I will use like five minutes to to explain this, and then I will use like fifteen minutes to go through the code. The code is quite, uh, it's not simple, but it's very similar to what I'm uh, what I teach you today, all right? The decoder normally will send wire one as the input uh, to the next time step. And then we'll we get a Y2, and then we'll use Y2 as the input uh, for the third time step, and so on and so forth. But there's an issue here. What happens if Y1 is false? 
if Y1 is false, it's a wrong, it's a, it's a, it's a wrong label. The, the Y1 here is false. And it's very likely that I will get a, uh, another false value for Y2. My value, my, my Y2 is false, then this, this, y, this Y2 is also false. Then Y3 probably is also false. And this is, a, you know, this is a, a circle, right? It's a bad circle. So, so this is an issue, especially when, when you are, when your model is at the very early training stage. So your, mo your model is, is like a baby at the very beginning, right? It doesn't know, it, 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 it don't know anything. And then um, as the training process keep going, it learns something um, from your data set, become more and more knowledgeable. And probably one day it becomes um, uh, more powerful to make the predictions. But at the very beginning, again, your Y1, it probably has 90% chance to be wrong. And your Y2 will be wrong because you made a mistake previously. Uh, and this is harmful, it's toxic for your, um, to your training, right? So that's why we introduced a, a technique named teacher forcing. It's just like you hire Big Sha. Uh, Big Sha knows everything, right? You just hire Big Sha to tell you what the correct answer should be. All right, so Y1, I know Y1 has 90% of uh, probability to, to be wrong, but a Big Sha just can tell you the answer, the, the wrong choose of Y1 hat. So you basically, you set a probability for teacher forcing. You tell Big Sha that, Big Sha, could you please have 80% chance to give me the correct answer. And Big Shot said yes. And then it will give you the ground choose, Y1 hat. Then you will get a correct input, right? Because you get a correct input, you will get a positive feedback from this backward propagation. Then you learn something. You learn something from the correct, from, from answer, right? Not, not, not something wrong. And then in the next time step, in the next round, probably you will, you will get a correct, uh, correct value for Y2. And again, your Y2, I don't care if Y2 is correct or not. I mean, this is your predicted value, right? It has probably have a 70% of chance to be wrong, but it's okay. Again, you ask a Big Shot, Big Shot, could you tell me the correct answer? If Big Shot has a good mood, 80% chance he had a good mood, then he, he will tell you the, the correct label, uh, the ground choose. And again, so, so uh, you're doing this process recursively. Um, um, uh, um, so, so teacher forcing is very important for, um, for your model's early training stage because your model is like a baby at the very beginning. It, uh, it knows nothing. So, uh, so you probably need to set the probability of teacher forcing to something like 0.90%. But when your model grows up, when your model becomes more powerful, knows more, you probably need to lower down the, the probability, probably to 80%, and then probably to 70%, and probably to 60%, right? So basically, this is quite straightforward. Uh, if you are powerful enough, you need less help from Big Shot, from others. But if, when, whenever you are at the early training stage, you do need some help. Then you set the probability of your teacher forcing to be something like uh, 90%, all right? Uh, Oh my God, I hate this one. I mean, this, uh... Okay, guys, could you understand this part? If, if you understand it, then type one, please. Zero point. I think this part is quite straightforward, right? It's not very difficult. Uh, is the probability to replace output Y1 uh, exactly. You replace your your true output, your own output, with the uh, the ground truth. The ground truth is, is the label, right? Because this is supervised learning. You you have the you have the label ready. So Y one hat is the true label. Y one is something you predict, but your prediction might be wrong, right? Okay. This is the first technique you need to implement. But this one is uh, as as, as I. Uh, that before it's, uh, it's not very hard compared to the attention. The second one is called gumbo uh, noise. Okay, this one is quite straightforward. It's just like uh, you, 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 you guys probably be very familiar with the uh, data argumentation stuff, right? Um, the data argumentation stuff is just like you add some noi noi noise to your 
to your data set be, uh, to make your data set become more you know diverse. Uh, so basically, you create some fake fake images or fake speech signals. The gamma noise is actually uh, follow the uh, following the same um, theory. So basically, you add some noise to your Y1. So, uh, okay, so please remember your Y1 here should be an embedding, right? The Y1 here should be should be a character like A, but you will have a embedding, a table. So whenever you uh, pass your Y1 to, to, the, to the cell of your LS10, you need to uh, transform this, this uh, character into its corresponding embedding right you cannot just directly uh pass a character to your to a model that doesn't make sense uh this i, I need to remind you this point um and again gamma noise is just like uh so y1 here is the embedding all right this is the embedding uh and i just add some so embedding looks like something like this it's a vector right Gamma noise is just like we add some noise. A gamma noise. Gamma noise is quite similar uh, to the, uh, the, the the Gaussian noise, but they um, it just follow another different distribution. You can check it out uh, by googling it uh, by googling it <clears throat> by by using the search engine. Then, um, yeah, gamma noise. Then probably you have some probability. You set a probability for your gamma noise. Uh, for example, zero point five or zero point one. Then you have a ten percent chance to add some noise to uh, to the elements of your uh, your embedding then in this way you can data augment that your, uh, your your features then make your feature probably more diverse um, so it is just like put it in a, in, a, in a more understandable way this is just like uh, data augmentation it's not seen very fancy so if you have um, done homework of uh, the, the part of homework two, then you should be very familiar with this. If you understand this part, could you? Uh, okay, so there's some question here. Um, why only teacher forcing for eighty percent of the time instead of one hundred percent at the beginning? Again, you need to learn something from a mistake, right? Your mistake is also valuable, isn't it? Yeah. If you if you just feed the the if you just feed the true label all the time, this is clearly overfitting, isn't it? So you are using the true label. You are using the training set. Uh, all the time then you're using the label uh yeah 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 so this is overfitting if you are using all using the true label all the time basically you are you are you are doing very well on the training set but you are doing very very bad on the uh on the uh, testing set or, or the true data um i recall professor saying that uh too much teacher forcing will cause the model to be uh really yeah exactly yeah yeah but overfitting issue might be uh, solved by reducing it with time. Exactly. That's why I emphasize that. This is very important, guys. This is very important. When you implement, so, so, so the teacher forcing stuff is, um, is equally important with, uh, with the attention. You need to linearly, okay, it's not linearly reducing it, but you need to find a pattern, find a specific time point to reduce your teacher forcing rate. But, but the series is the same. I mean, the, at the very beginning, you set a higher value. As the time go, I mean, as your model becomes more and more powerful, uh, which probably need less and less help from others, you did you reduce the teaching rate, uh, the teaching forcing rate. But you need to make the decision when your model is powerful. I will not tell you the detail here, but you need to figure it out by yourself. And then, uh, not stereo female model, you have to deal with solutions. Um, if the gamma noise also add during uh, inference, you can do it. This is a good point. You can do it. You can do it in the inference. You can also do it in the training. Um, yeah, I didn't get intuition. So basically, you are if you are doing it on um, doing the inference, uh, it's more like a random random search, right? Uh, it's it's kind of it's not the same with random search. It's kind of similar to random search. Um, I didn't get intuition of gamma noise and how it works. Can you elaborate? Uh, yeah. So are you familiar with data augmentation? So your your data set is like something like this. This is your data set. This is your, the real world. Your 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 true training data set is a subset of your real world data. Um, I'm not saying they're the same, but it is follows the follows the idea of data augmentation because uh, if you add some 
add some noise to your embedding, probably you will, you know, expand your data set, something like this. Yeah. So this is how it works. Uh, um, is scumble noise the only way? No, 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 no. I will not tell you the answer how to do the data augmentation in speech. Uh, you need to figure it out. By, but I can give you some hint. Uh, just like, you know, uh, yeah, noise. I mean, noise is a very good. So no matter for speech or image, noise is a very good stuff for for augmenting your data, right? Uh, for your image, it, you change the color, you you rotate the image. It's just like it's just like adding some noise. Uh, in in speech, you can also do the time masking. Like you, this is your one D speech. You might mask some part of it, right? Uh, along the x uh, axis or along the y axis. Uh, then to yeah, and also you can you know uh, for the raw speech data, you can you know speed up the tr the speaker's uh, speaking speed. And then you can also, you know, uh, yeah, you, you can do anything. I mean, you can do anything. Yeah, this is, um, this really depends on your uh, imagination. But uh, what operation will work, uh, I will keep it secret. Um, are you using, I don't, uh, are you using an additional linear layer to transport the ground truth to an embedding? Yeah, this, you can't think it as a uh, linear layer. It's actually embedding layer, right? If you Google it, um, uh, if you Google uh, embedding layer on Google uh, uh, for for PyTorch, you will get more information. So basically, you are you are you are maintaining a list, a dictionary. So this is this is a dictionary for all the character. This is your character. This is the embedding. You need to uh, you need to maintain this list. So what's the embedding? You need to learn it, right? Um, as the shame of the prediction. Uh, yeah, of course you are learning. You, you are learning anything. I mean, you are learning anything uh, involved in your backward propagation, right? Because you're doing the clearly why one the embedding is involved in the in the back propagation. So that's why uh, it will be learned. Is gamma noise the only way for data manipulation? Okay, I really answered that. Okay, good. Uh, I will. Yeah. So because this homework has a lot of contents, uh, it's very hard to. Uh, cover everything uh, within 80 minutes, but I will try to use another 10 minutes or 15 minutes to quickly go through the code. But this is the end of the uh, visualization today. All right, I, I hope you guys learned something. Okay, uh, let's go back to, uh, to the coding. Okay, so this is uh, this is import your uh, is this? Can you can you this is everything clear to you guys? It's not very small, right? Okay, okay, okay. If you have any issue with uh with the okay, okay, it's look okay. So this is importing, uh, and this is some some very uh, you know, standard stuff. So again, just like just like uh Homer. Homer three part two. You need a list, a letter list, A B C D F G. So all the kind of all the possible uh, character which might recur uh, might occur in your training set. Um, yeah. So this is a list. And again, because um, um, in this Homer, uh, the labels is is some index. They are not character. So basically, you need you need to create a dictionary. Uh, for the latter to index mapping and index to latter mapping. Uh, yeah, so basically you need to create a, a, a dictionary, uh, a mapping function. So this part is very, uh, it's very straightforward. You need two mapping dictionaries here. And then you will load the data, right? The training data, validation data, testing data, everything. And then you will load the row data, the row transcript. The transcript is the task, the, the task sequence, uh, which is uh, encoded in index, zero, one, two, three stuff. But you need something, um, you know, you need some latter. So basically you need to use the function that you created before to, to convert everything from index to 
to oh sorry actually you should trans translate everything from string to index yeah uh, the row data the row the row label is uh, is a string but you need to translate it to, to into index and again this part is very similar uh, to what you are what do you have uh, for the uh, homework four part of uh, homework three part two uh, yeah the initialization the get lands for the get item is also very standard uh, but you need to consider the situation for the testing set, which has no labels. So uh, in that case, the self y equal now, right? So basically you need to uh, add an if else statement to handle this situation, but you can also create two data set. Uh, it really depends on you. Um, but I, I just give you two options here. Um, the first op option is just, you know, create a if else statement, or you can just create two function. So for the collate function, if you are doing the homework three part two, you uh, should be very familiar with it. Uh, you create a collate for the training and validation set. You create a collate for your testing set, right? So this is, a, I think it should be very similar uh, to the uh, homework three part two. You create the data set, you create data loader. Okay, so this is the pyramid LSTM. Um, uh, wait a minute, so I, I need to open Okay, yeah. So this is the structure you need to implement in this piece of code. All right. Uh, you need to handle the situation when the sequence lens is old. Uh, the even the even situation is quite simple, right? But you need to do the padding or truncation. Um, uh, it's, again, this is based on your it's on your choice. Uh, yeah. So you need to implement it by yourself but it's not difficult. Um, yeah, I think it's not difficult. Yeah, I mean, and the encoder. Okay, the encoder should be this part, right? This part. Okay, I need to uh, mention here. So your encoder, I mean, for this example, your encoder has a three part. L0 is a normal LSTM. Again, it is a normal LSTM. It is not a pyramid LSTM. L1, L2 is the pyramid, all right? So basically you have one normal LSTM, Valina LSTM, you have a two, a block of uh, pyramid LSTMs. Uh, normally you are just set the, layer num the number of layers to two, I mean, for, for the pyramid structure. So go to the coding part, you need to define the LSTM which is at the very bottom. This is, a, again, this is the normal LSTM, right? This is L0. Uh, uh, Jesus. Okay, yeah. And then you need to define the block of, uh, uh, the block of uh, pyramid LSTM. So this is a block, right? This is a block. So in this specific example, you have a two uh, pyramid LSTM. Uh, you need to define it here. And then again, this is a key value. You are using linear transformation for producing key and value for attention, right? So you need to create the two linear learnable uh, linear layer for transforming your hidden state to key and a value. And again, the key, you, you normally, you can't, you can't, you, uh, normally, I, I suggest you just set the dimension of your key and value to be the same, all right? And again, the key here, the dimension of your key here should be the same with your hidden state. Otherwise you can, um, or you, you will find it very hard to calculate the similarity between these two vectors. And the forward part, uh, quite straightforward. You pass the you pass your input to the first LSTM, 
before you're doing that, you need to encode your sequence, right? You encode everything. Uh, I think you should be familiar with this uh, in your homework three part two. Once you pack everything, um, you pass it as the input into your LSTM. Uh, you get a packed output. And then you will pass the packet out to your PBLSTM block. You will get another output. And then you will unpack the sequence. You will unpack the output from your pyramid BLS10 blocks. And then do the linear transformation to get a key and the value, which will be used for the attention uh, in your decoder. All right, this is the encoder. Encode is also very straightforward. So this is attention. I think they already provides you with the code in the last uh, recitation about attention. Again, you calculate the similarity, which is the energy here. You got a key, you got a query, you calculate the energy. The higher energy means um, they are more related to each other, right? And then you are you you are take a softmax to because the energy is the the real value, right? You need to normalize it to probability. And then you are use this probability to multiply this probability, which is the tension, with your real value saved in your data set to get a real context. This context is nothing but a special vector that tells you which part of your input um, I need to focus on. Okay. Uh, again, you need to implement attention by yourself. Uh, I also provide a, uh, a helper function for you guys to visualize the attention. This is extremely important. Again, this is very, very important. This is the only way you got, probably probably the, the only way you, you, you have to debug your code. Um, so basically, um, uh, I personally use like two weeks for debugging um, the, uh, the attention stuff last semester. But you probably uh, could do better than me, much better than me. But I, I know I know a lot of students also uh, you know struggling um, on this part. So you need to analyze again. You really need to learn how to debug and analyze your training log. You are not you know doing the arrow and the trail, hoping you can find something you know magical help you, you know to pass the test or get something very high uh, score. That is not. Uh, the, the correct way to do it. You need to analyze, especially in this homework, you really need to learn how to analyze your attention, how it change. So basically, uh, I should have attention plot here. Uh, yeah. If your model is learning, you will get a diagonal line. Okay, man, this diagonal line is really difficult to get. I used two weeks to get it. You probably you probably use um, yeah. It really depends on how you uh, uh, if you have understood everything I uh, mentioned this uh, in this boot camp. But hopefully you are used last time to get this um, attention. So basically your attention will looks like a a, a, traffic, a, a rubbish like at the very beginning. But you need to be very patient um, to analyze how it will progress um, each epoch. All right. This is some skill you need to learn. You must learn uh, in this homework um, to analyze your training log. Your training log should be your added distance, your training loss, your validation loss, your training time. I mean, every, every statistic is very useful for, for you know, for the analysis. Um, the most important part is this one, is the, is the plot. You want this diagonal one. The diagonal means, you know, uh, for the first input, I need to focus on the first at the first output, I need to focus on the first input. For the second one, I need to focus on the second one. This is exactly what I, uh, uh, exactly the case that I used uh, in my uh, machine translation uh, example, right? Okay, so this is a helper function to help you visualize it. Uh, and then this is tension. BMM is just batch multiplication, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, decoder, okay, decoder is a bit complex. Uh, again, decoder here, you are not use the uh, LSTM. You are use LSTM cell because this is a recursive process, right? You get an input, you get a 
contest from the previous cell, you get uh, the, the label, you get a hidden state, three, three input, and then you get all of them and then concatenate them. We're doing some operation on them to get a new vector and then feed it to the next uh, input cell. So basically you are used cell here. You use a LSTM cell, not LSTM. Um, yeah, and again, the output from the second LSTM cell, this is exactly what I'm talking here. The hidden state here should be the query for calculating the tension in replace of, uh, yeah, and you can use gumbo noise and teacher forcing to improve your performance. I, I, I have already covered all the details in this visualization um, graphs, right? So basically, in this example, you have a two. You have a two cell. You have two LSTM. The first is uh, is the is this one, right? So this is LSTM one, and you initialize it using LSTM cell, LSTM two. Be careful about the dimension here. You you this is your responsibility to figure out why I'm using uh, embedding dimension plus the key value size. The reason why I I use the name key value size is that I I, I, I just like I said before, I, I suggest you just set the size of them to be the same. Uh, you can change it if you if you, uh, you you don't think this is a good idea, it's on your choice. But normally I will by default think you will use the same size for both the key and the value vector, right? Yeah, and, and that's it. Uh, you initialize your attention, you initialize your uh, vocabulary size uh, yeah, this is the embedding. The the character probability is the embedding. This is exactly uh, I, I remember a student asking, well, that linear uh, embedding layer be learned exactly. This is a uh, just like a normal linear layer, which will be learned uh, during the back propagation process. And yeah, you initialize the key value size, and they are the same. Uh, yeah, and for because. This is a kind of follow up, right? You are recursively feed the input, the output from the previous step as the input to the next time step. So you are have a very big follow up. You have a very big follow up. Um, for training, so basically you have two modes. If you're doing training, uh, or actually this is not tra training, yet, only the training. If you are, if you are in, in, in the training stage, your max lands, uh, yeah, you can you can get the the the, the max length. The ma the last length should be the the second dimension of your y because your y should already be padded, right? Uh, so you can get the max length. But you, in the testing, because you don't know the length of your data, so you just by default using the six hundred. Six hundred should be greater than the maximum value, uh, the maximum length you're testing set. Um, I'm not quite sure. I've not tested it yet. But if um if it is not the case, then I will update you. Uh, later, all right. But in the last semester, 600 is enough. Okay, this is the most difficult part. <clears throat> so basically, this is a for loop. The for loop is um is um simulates the um, the decoding process, right? In the training mode. You need to enable. You need to implement your teacher forcing and the gumbo noise here. You implement teacher forcing first, and then gumbo noise. The first one is much more important than the second one. Uh, the details had already been covered in the in the in the book and in this visualization, right? Uh, you set a probability to get a real value, uh, to get a ground truth, to you know help your model learning. Yeah, and this is this part you need to implement yourself. And then this char embedding is just, you know, you use the embedding layer to map your prediction from a character to an embedding. Quite straightforward, right? And then you concatenate, you concatenate your char embedding with the context to get a Y, out, uh, y context. Y, uh, y out, uh, context should be, uh, Yeah, it should be something like in here, yeah. And then uh, you get the first hidden state of your LSTM one here. It should be hidden state, right? And then you pass that hidden state 
to the second cell. Yeah, you pass it to the second cell. You get another output. The output is the query here. It's the orangey uh, vector here. You will use this output, use the key, use the value, three input. Again, I have, a, I have a repeated a lot of times. You use this three input to calculate the C1. C1 is the context which tells you which, in, uh, which part of the input you need to focus on, right? Um, and then, okay, so I, I think I, I have mi uh, misspoke something. So basically uh, the Y context should be something uh, over, over here. Yeah, it should be something over here. And this is the output context. Output context is, uh, is something over here. So before, right before your, 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 your prediction layer. So uh, you concatenate the output the output should be uh, should be something out of your second layer, right? Uh, and the context you just calculated uh, using the attention, you concatenate to together, get a, a new vector, uh, which is output con context over here. And then you use the, uh, you calculate the embedding because you have a embedding layer, right? You calculate the embedding and then uh, uh, and then you append it to the uh, prediction list and then you just return the prediction. Sequence to sequence model. So basically we have already covered the decoder, the encoder, attention, all the three main components for LAS. And again, LAS is an end-to-end sequence to sequence model. So we need to write a wrapper function, a wrapper class to wrap everything together. So this is just a wrapper. Um, you, it has an encoder part, it has decoder part, it has a forward. Um, but this is quite straightforward to implement it. I mean, the most difficult part should be the decoder, encoder and attention and teacher forcing stuff. Um, this is a training. You have a eight type. Okay, this is another important point. It should be the last point. Uh, again, you iterate uh, your data set, your data loader, you set everything to the uh, device, quite uh, straightforward, right? And then you pass your input and lens to a model, again, very normal. And then you need to generate a mask based on the lens of your test. So why we need a mask? Again, your input might have a different lens because you part it with zero. So the last function you calculated using this data is not accurate. So you need a mask to mask out all of this uh, pattern stuff and then use the remaining real data to calculate the loss, all right? I hope this makes sense. So you generate a mask based on the lens of a test. You need to ensure that the mask is on the device, yes, and it's um, have the correct shape. You calculate the loss and then mask it. You use the mask that you, you generated before to remove the padding part. And then you will get a masked loss. You do the backwards on the masked loss, not the, uh, not the original loss, right? Um, and then you can, uh, you can clip your uh, gradients, but this is optional. And then you take a step of your optimizer and you need to print the statistic. Again, this is a very, very important. You need to use all kinds of methods you know to help you analyze your training. Loss, at a distance, training time, attention plot, everything that you know. You make it neat and concise uh, and, and maintain everything into one single file for later analysis. Don't just, you know, magically or randomly change your parameters. That will not help um, help you to pass uh, this homework. Okay, so this is a training block. You will write the validation block yourself. Uh, you will write the testing block yourself. Uh, and then you define everything and start the training. Okay, uh, if you have understand it, you can type one. If you have a question, you can. Um, open a microphone. So this is all the contents today. I will give you guys like 10 minutes to ask questions. All right. I, I, I already lost my voice. 
but I, so I will not keep it too long. <clears throat> Do you have any questions? If I have any question, you can you can just uh, unmute it. I mean, this is oh. actually just translation uh, of this uh, visualization, right? It's not. I I have not involved anything new. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. What's what's the question? Uh, I had a question about I think a couple of blocks above the one with attention and context and all of that. Context. Uh, this one. I think one block below. Mm. Decoder. Uh, yes, I think like, um, uh, so there was one part where we were supposed to initialize the, the context. I just wanted to know what that referred to. Uh, initialize the context here. Yes. Uh, yeah. So before, before the loop, it says initialize the context. Uh, initialize like the context. You answer me the question for me. What What do you think? So context is something you get from your context is a C one C two right, but at the very beginning because you have no C one uh you have no context. I mean for S or S there's no context right. So how you right. deal with that situation? Well, it shouldn't have any context because everything will start with an S O S. Exactly. Right? So you can just initialize it to zero, or randomly. Oh okay. It doesn't matter, right? So but, it, it would refer to the context that SOS starts with and not anything else. Uh, say it again. Uh, it would refer to the context that SOS would have started with. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Uh, there's no other questions. Okay. I will stop recording here. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you for being so patient. I mean, uh, it takes you uh, two hours, but there's a lot of contents. I, I'm trying my best. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I will stop recording. Um, uh, how, do you, how do you stop?